Math is all about spotting patterns. The idea that we can recognise something is going to happen every single time in the same way. But we could focus in on that idea of pattern spotting a little bit more. And we could concentrate particularly on number patterns, patterns in numbers. For example, 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, and so on. There is a clearly defined number pattern. In fact, that is a sequence. A list of numbers defined by a particular pattern. The next number in the sequence would be 16. How do we know? Because this is a sequence, there is a set pattern. If something has a set pattern, it is a sequence. If something is a sequence, then it has a set pattern. The set pattern this time, every time we go from one number in the list to the next by adding three. So the next number in the list would be 16. The rule, what we call the rule, the way that these numbers are generated is to add three. Final piece of terminology we could add at this point, each of the numbers in this sequence, in this list, is said to be a term in the sequence. So we started with the first five terms of this sequence, we added a sixth term, the seventh term would then be three more, 19. We can have all sorts of number patterns, all sorts of rules for generating sequences. As long as there is a set pattern of some sort that repeats and doesn't change, then we have a sequence and we can define a rule for that sequence. Say something like um, 23, 18, 13, 8. We could work out the next number in that sequence. That is a sequence, it's a different kind of sequence, but this time the rule, well, each time we're going to be taking away 5. It's a sequence decreasing this time, it's going down, but the next one would be 8. Take away the 5 would leave us with 3, and the rule for this sequence would be take away 5. Still a set pattern that happens every single time. We could have something like this list. We don't appear to be adding or taking anything on this time, certainly not a common value. We're adding on 1, we're adding on 2, we're adding on 4, we're adding on 8. Okay, that doesn't seem to be doing anything particularly, but if we look a little bit more closely, we might recognise that each time we are doubling the numbers or timesing by 2, which means the next number in the sequence would be 16 times by 2 is 32. And the rule would be times 2. We can even have sequences defined by rules that aren't um, operation based, that aren't add, take, times, divide, that kind of thing. We could have something like, say, um, 3, um, 9, 27, 81, now, yes, we could say that each time this, the numbers in this sequence are timesing by 3. We could, we absolutely could say that. Perfectly fine. The next number will be 81 times 3 is 243. There is another way we could define that. If we are timesing by 3 each time, then what this is, yes, the rule is times 3, but the rule is also powers of 3. 3 to the power of 1, 3 squared, 3 cubed, 3 to the power of 4, and then 3 to the power of 5. We can have very simple defined sequences. Again, defined non-numerically. Something like this. 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Well, yes, that's the 2 times table. Yes, it's um, going up in 2s, adding 2 each time, starting from 2. But it's also the even numbers. And it's important to recognise that that is the case. We can even use sequences, use this kind of number pattern to find numbers later on, to find later terms in the sequence. If we started with something like this, 6, 4, 2, 0, minus 2, perfectly good sequence that then carries on. We might, for example, want to find the tenth term. Well, we've already got one, two, three, four, five terms, so we are in fact halfway there already. First thing we need to do is we need to recognise what the rule is. Well, clearly, each time we are taking away two. We are going down by two each time, so the rule is going to be minus two. Well, then the sixth term will be two less, so minus four. The seventh term will be minus six. The eighth term be minus 8. The ninth term will be minus 10. And the tenth term, the one we're looking for, will be minus 12. And there is our answer. Now the thing with this question is, finding the tenth term here wasn't that difficult. We had a clearly defined rule going down in twos, so that's easy enough to work out quickly. And the tenth term isn't too much further on from where we were at. We're already at the fifth term, we just need to find five more terms, quick enough. But what if we wanted to find, say, the fiftieth term, or the thousandth term, or the ten thousandth term, which, for whatever reason, we might need to do. Perhaps this is a sequence of real values coming from a particular real-life problem. We might need to know a term that far down the sequence. And yes, we could do this process, but it would take us a long time. Even if we got a computer to do it, it would still take a while. So it would be helpful if we could have some way to easily and quickly find any term in a given sequence. And to do that, we turn to algebra. Consider the following sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. The standard counting numbers, the whole numbers, greater than zero. Now, rather than just write a rule for any sequence, like plus 2 or minus 5, we can write instead what's called an algebra rule for the sequence. Describe the sequence in much the same way, but this will let us find any given term in the sequence. And the algebra rule for any sequence all is all based on the algebra rule for this one here, this particular sequence. It all stems from this. So we assign a particular algebra rule to this sequence to get us started. And we call this particular sequence here the sequence n. For number, if you like. We can then define any other sequence in relation to this. For example, think about the sequence... 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now we might recognise that sequence, hopefully we will recognise that sequence as the even numbers, sure, but also the 2 times table. Now if we compare these two sequences, we might notice that in each case, the number in the second sequence is twice as big as the corresponding number in the first sequence, 2 and 1, 4 and 2, 6 and 3, 8 and 4, 10 and 5, and so on. So we could define an algebra rule for this sequence here. If the whole of this sequence is twice as big at every point, we're going to have 2 times this first sequence, which means our second sequence will be 2n, because it's twice as big. If we think about the next one up, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, for example, the 3 times table 
compare that to the original sequence, 1 to 3, 2 to 6, 3 to 9, 4 to 12, 5 to 15. Each time the number in the new sequence is 3 times as big, which means we can give it the algebra rule 3n. If we skipped a few and thought about something like, say, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, each time, compared to the original sequence, this one up here, the number in the new sequence is 10 times as big. So our algebra rule would be 10n. Something to notice about the numbers in these sequences, however, well, if we look at this one, for example, the numbers in here were twice as big as the ones in the original sequence, which is where the 2n came from. But this is also the 2 times table. Now, the 2 times table is made up of everything that's been times by 2. It's 1 lot of 2, 2 lots of 2, 3 lots of 2, 4 lots of 2, 5 lots of 2, and so on. So any number in the 2 times table is 2 times something. 2 times something, where the something is being represented by n. This sequence here is the 3 times table, and any number in the 3 times table will be 3 times something, or 1 lot of 3, 2 lots of 3, 3 lots of 3, 4 lots of 3, and so on. And this rule is 3 times something, where the something is represented by n. 10 times table, 10 times something, 10 times something. So our first step to identifying an algebra rule is to think about the times tables. If it's the 2 times table, it's going to give us a 2n. 3 times table, give us a 3n. 4 times table, give us a 4n. 10 times table, give us a 10n. And so on. OK, so the first thing we need to be aware of is that the algebra rule for any sequence has a particular name. And we call the particular algebra rule for that sequence, the nth term, for reasons that will become clear in a bit. Every sequence has an nth term, it will only have one nth term, and the nth term will only generate that sequence. So the algebra rules are unique to the sequence they are describing. We've already We've already seen a couple of algebra rules. The n, the 2n, the 3n, and the 10n were algebra rules. They were nth terms for those particular sequences. But we can use that to help us find the algebra rules, the nth terms, for any particular sequence. Take this sequence, for example. 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, and so on. First thing we might want to notice is that this is indeed a sequence. It is a set pattern of numbers starting at 3, going up in jumps of 4 each time. Second thing we might want to notice, however, is that unlike the ones we've just seen and written algebra rules, nth terms 4, this is not a times table. This is not recognisable as one of the standard times tables. But we can use that to help us. We can still use that idea to get somewhere towards the answer. First thing we're going to do is we're going to notice what it's going up in each time. So we're going to actually write that down underneath. It's going up in 4 each time. Jumps of 4. Now, if it's going up in 4s, it must be a little bit like the 4 times table. The 4 times table goes up in 4s. This sequence must be a little bit like that. Now, if it's a little bit like the 4 times table, then it must be a little bit like the sequence that's associated with the 4 times table. And the sequence, the algebra rule that's associated with the 4 times table, is the sequence 4n. 4 times table, 4n. And I'm going to write that sequence out. So the 4 times table goes 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Why have I written this one out? Because we have an nth term, an algebra rule for that sequence. We know what that is. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, the 4 times table, has the nth term 4n. But we aren't interested in that sequence, we're interested in our sequence. So what I'm going to do underneath is I'm going to write out our sequence. 3, 7, 11, 15, 19. 
I'm then going to look at the two sequences. I'm going to start with the 4n and then I'm going to look at hours, comparing the 4n to this one at each step of the way. Looking at our sequence, each number in our sequence is one less than the four times table, the matching number in the 4n sequence. 4 down to 3, 8 down to 7, 12 down to 1, 16 down to 15, 20 down to 19. So our algebra rule, our nth term, it must have something to do with the 4n, but then each time, what do we do? Well, we take away 1, and there is our nth term. It's the 4n, 4 times table, and then take away 1 at each stage. We can have a look at another sequence, 8, 13, 18, 23, and 28. A question would probably be fairly straightforward. Find the nth term for this sequence. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do exactly the same set of steps again. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the difference between each number in the sequence. 8 to 13 to 18 to 23 to 28, it's going up in fives each time. If our sequence is going up in jumps of five, it must be a little bit like something else that goes up in jumps of five, i.e. the five times table. And if it's a little bit like the five times table, then the algebra rule, the nth term, must be something to do with five n, because 5n is the algebra rule for the 5 times table. So I'm going to jot down the 5n, and I'm going to write down the first few things in that sequence. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'm then, underneath that, going to write down our sequence. 8, 13, 18, 23, 28. I'm then, for each pair of numbers, one from the 5n, one from our sequence, going to work out how I've got from here to here. How I've got from the 5n, I'm always going to start with that one, the one that we know the rule for, I'm going to get from there to our sequence. And each time to get from the 5n to our sequence, I've gone 5 to 8, 10 to 13, 15 to 18 and so on, I have had to add 3, which means our nth term must be the 5n that we recognise it as being something like, and then add three. But all that still begs the question, why are these useful? How did these help us with this idea of being able to find any term in a given sequence? Well, let's look at the same sequence again, 8, 13, 18, 23, 28, and we've already found the nth term. That would be a good part A for a question. Part A would be find the nth term of this sequence. A good part B of a question then would ask you to find one or more particular terms quite a way down the line. So you could keep counting, but it would take you so long that really they're encouraging you to do it with the nth term. We want to notice that this is called the nth term. The nth term. And that n is always a placeholder. Anytime we're using any sort of algebra, it's being used to code for a particular number. It's being used as a placeholder, a space filler. What we're being asked to find here is we're being asked to find the 10th term and the 50th term. There's two separate things. So we're going to find the 10th term first of all. Well, to find the 10th term, what we've done is we have swapped out the value of n, we have substituted the value of n for 10. This is our nth term, we want the 10th term, so we're swapping out the n for the value 10, which means we're going to swap it out here in this rule as well. So the rule says for the nth term, you take your value of n, you times it by 5, you add 3, because that's just an expression that we can use, we can substitute into. We want to find the 10th term, so we're going to substitute 10 into that sequence. So we're going to do 5 times the 10, and then we're going to add 3. 5 times 10 is 50, plus the 3 is 53, and the 10th number in that sequence would be 53. If we wanted the 50th term, we can do exactly the same thing. Only this time, instead of substituting in 10, we're going to substitute in 50. The algebra rule says we take our n, we times it by 5, we add 3, and this time we are substituting in 50. We are letting the value of n be 50. So we're going to do 5 times the 50, and then we're going to add 3. Well, 5 times 5 is 25, so 5 times 50 would be 250, plus the 3, 
and the 50th term in that sequence, the 50th number in the list, would be 253.